outside is Philip Sherwood at the RGF factory, here to talk about the features of the RGF food tunnel. Here you have the main stainless steel belt. That's what's going to convey the food from one side to the other. This is the outlet side. You've got your main motor and gearbox that's going to drive the whole system. The main feature of these units are what we call the hoods. These are what are going to contain your UV lamps. That's going to provide all the energy for the food sanitation. So you've got two upper lamps, horizontal and vertical configuration. There's also one from underneath. That's going to give you 360 degrees of protection and energy to kill any bacteria that's on the food surface. One, two, and then three on this, and you have one, two, three on this section as well. So you have two sections or six total hoods. So what this contains actually is a PHI cell. What that is, it's a UV lamp that's shining on our uh, patented coating or catalyst. That's going to create PHI gases. Photohydroionization is what we mean by that. Basically vaporized hydrogen peroxide. That's going to go into the system where the food is going through and create these gases that's going to mix with the UV energy and create advanced oxidation. That's going to give you the maximum effectiveness of our machine. So when you engage the on button, the green button, it's going to open up two valves. Actually, you're going to slide open. Fan is going to energize and it's going to actually start filling the space with these PHI gases. This entire system opens up to be cleaned as well, uh, the upper and lower hoods. Uh, every corner has an on-off button, an on-off and an emergency stop. Every corner, no matter any, where anyone's standing, they can hit a button to make sure they can control the machine. As you can see from right here, we have a ballast box. These contains all the lamp indicators. If you ever have a lamp on or off, you'll be able to tell which light and which position it is. So this is the inlet of the machine. You have these inlet flaps just to make sure that your eye line does not go right into the UV lights. So first I'll show the lower hood. So you have, there's handles on the bottom you have to kind of lift up, push back a little bit, and then it's going to kind of drop down in about an inch and actually pull out sort of like a drawer. Be very careful, there's one stop it catches, and then as it's pulling, you can go all the way out, it actually drops down all the way. So you want to do this anytime you want to clean the hoods. So at the end of every day or every shift or however uh, you plan on using it, you can clean these, these lamps. So what you're looking at right here is actually, uh, there's an outer PPC shielding. Uh, it's all food safe. Uh, there's an inner aluminum tubing to protect any kind of impact that these lamps will have. There's actually a lamp inside that as well being protected. So this is all washed down rated. Uh, but we don't recommend any kind of high pressure spraying in here. We actually recommend like a low pressure and if you can, wash by hand. So everyone, you can wipe down with a rag. Um, all these surfaces. Um, high pressure Anywhere that there's not a lamp, but not on the lamps themselves, we recommend kind of treating those gently. Um, it is electronics. Um, if you ever need to replace them, I can walk through that as well. But there are these um, uh, nuts and glands on the outside that will open up. This is where all the, uh, the wiring is in this section. Um, so whenever you're done cleaning, you can pick it back up. Just slide all the way forward. And then actually pull it back a little bit. The lower one's very easy, the upper one's actually even easier. So you just pull the top handle, you can see it come all the way down, kind of gently put it down. You can see there's one, two, three lamps going vertically, one, two, three lamps going horizontally. The same idea, right? So you want to do a kind of a gentle a hand wash around the edges, uh, no high pressure spraying, but you can kind of hit it in there. Uh, this has a polished surface, all stainless steel. Uh, that's for maximum. Uh, reflectiveness, uh, maximum cleaning, so we want to make sure that you keep that shiny. So now I'm going to show how you fully open the machine for extra cleaning. So you want to open the top hoods first. So these front flaps will actually come right off for cleaning. Uh, you can dip these into a barrel or however you want to clean them as well. Now this inlet shield is actually going to flip up. Same with the reverse. So there is an option as well um, to clean the unit while it's moving. 
you can tell that the lights will be off, of course, because the upper hoods are open. You can spray these front area, sometimes the inlet sprockets and the outlet as well um, will get a little dirty. So you can spray these with a high pressure spray if you want. As the unit's running, it will get slightly warm. So make sure before you touch these surfaces and right here specifically, uh, these are actually what we call a heat chimney. So any excess heat is actually going to kind of naturally flow up out these chimneys uh, to kind of draw heat away uh, from the lamps themselves. So this may get a little warm as it's running. Once it's off for a little while, it will cool down pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, this is the other side of that same PHI module. Um, so these are actually sanitary fittings. You can quickly disconnect these if you ever need to replace uh, the cell in there as well. These are the cells actually bolted on with these bolts all the way around. You could actually clean it in place, uh, but if you wanted to, you could uh, take off these sanitary fittings, bring it back to your workbench for working on. Uh, same upper hoods. This is just an inlet shield. Um, this, there's nothing. There's no lamp in this section. This is just um, kind of a light blocking area. Here's that same on-off power box. The main control box is right here. Uh, where I began. So what did we have here? We have an on green, an off red, and an interlock open. So I'll energize the system now, simple. All you need to do every morning, you just push the green button. You can see it's automatically going to engage that motor. It's, the conveyor belt's going to start moving, and the lamps are going to turn on at the same time. So you can actually see that the lighting's good. All these LED indicators are on. These are all glowing green. That means every lamp in this hood section is on. Um, it also contains a safety feature. It's very important. Uh, you don't have a direct line of sight into the UV lamps, right? You can see some reflection, maybe through here, that kind of bluish light. That's actually visible light. But when you open these, we have, we have a sensor that checks the level. If you open it fast as it's running, you can see the, the lights have all turned off. The conveyor is still running. This is a safety feature so you don't look directly at the lights. We want to make sure that it's as safe as possible. Right, so whenever it's open, if you have any kind of maintenance issues, you might need to open it. When you close it, you'll notice it does not come back on. Right, so that's a safety feature. We didn't want it to automatically energize unexpectedly. We want to, we want to make you push the button to turn it back on. So you'll have an interlock to open on. You'll notice the green turned off. So you'll have to reset the system. All that does is flip these lights, turn the green on, and you'll see that it's now engaged. Um, if you ever need to adjust the speed of the unit, I'll run through that really quickly. Um, first, you want to turn the unit off. You'll have these three locks that you'll need a screwdriver to operate. You'll turn off the main disconnect. Let's see here. So you'll see this is the main control box. Now you can so to turn that disconnect back on, flip the green button, you'll see it engage. This thing is powered by what we call a VFD, variable frequency drive, um, which is pretty simple to operate. Generally set it once at startup and then you don't um, mess with it anymore. So if you wanted to speed it up, all you have to do is turn this knob. I sped it up about 50%. Um, so generally you'd only do this at startup and once you're happy with your speed, uh, we, you can leave it there. We recommend at least one minute of treatment time under the hoods. That's going to give you the maximum effectiveness, the maximum energy that's going to uh, kill the most bacteria and mold. So you, you can speed it up more um, depending on your needs, depending on your bacteria load levels. Whenever you're done, we actually recommend hitting the red stop button as opposed to the emergency stop. So the reason that is, is in this PHI module itself, like I said, there's, there's going to be two valves that are going to open when you hit the green button, and then when you hit the red button, they're going to close. So that's to keep water out. Whenever you have a wash down, you've got, of course, water goes, goes everywhere. Um, those two valves closing are going to minimize any water into this unit right here. All the electronics, you can see the power is going in right here, um, are inside this box. So if you hit the e-stop, it kills all power to the machine, and those valves do not close. So you want to make sure you hit the stop, the red button, and that's actually going to leave power on, so 
deactivate all those systems. It's going to leave power just long enough to close those valves, and then it's going to shut the power off. So it's important, don't necessarily hit that e-stop, hit the red button. See this ballast box? If you ever need to replace these ballasts, you're going to want to turn off the disconnect for right here. Open up the three locks. There you'll see all the ballasts. Um, you'll have to correlate which one is, is not working, if any of them break. Um, they all unbolt. They're all fully labeled. You've got the upper hoods, and you have a lower one as well. To replace the lamp, first you take out this electrical panel. Remove end cap nuts, 7 16 electrical panel is going to slide off. Now you're going to see all of the end connections for each individual lamp. So if we're going to replace the second lamp in this hood, we're going to find the correct electrical connection first. It's just a unscrew, pull apart. So there is a connector on the end of this lamp. You actually Push in a little bit and do a quarter turn. So I'll demonstrate this. Push in, quarter turn. You'll see this connection point. We'll grab it, push in, left to release, push in, tighten to, to pull in. So here's the lamp assembly. Pull all the way out. To reinsert the lamp, put in your new lamp. Slide forward. So then you push forward, turn a quarter turn to the right to lock it in place. Then you want to remake those electrical connections. You just push together and twist. Every lamp comes with its own O-ring to align it to the center of the aluminum shielding for protection. So anytime you have a lamp replacement, you want to take out this end gland nut. The O-ring slides into the hole. We use like a plastic tool to center that. O-ring. Have a cushion for the lamp within that aluminum housing. So once you add the O-ring, retighten that end nut by hand and it's done. So to remove the outer PPC covering, if it becomes damaged, or the aluminum shield, if anything becomes uh, damaged, you can replace those by first taking off the end nut. First you wanna remove that lamp, make sure it's removed. And you're gonna have to remove these three quarter inch screws. When you remove the last bolt, this gland nut slides right out. The outer PPC and land shield come off in one piece. And then slowly move out. You can replace any damaged parts, slide it back in with a reverse procedure.